Now, some companies sell microscopes very similar to these for three to five times the cost. And they say that their microscopes are capable of 8,000, 12,000, or even up to 30,000 times magnification. Is that possible? Well, optically, no, not with today's light microscopes. But if you're talking about viewing your image on a video monitor, well, that's different. Now we are talking video magnification. If you have a red blood cell on a video monitor and say you measured it at, oh, two inches in diameter, well, taking an actual red blood cell size of seven to eight microns and dividing it into the two inches gives you a bit over 6,000 times magnification. But the big question is, is there any more information in terms of resolution in the picture you see on your monitor versus what you see looking through the eyepiece? No, there's not. Video magnification, for the most part, is all empty magnification. But as the mind's eye fills in detail when looking at a large image projected on a TV screen, sometimes that bigger image can be very nice. Something else you might see written on an objective are the words OIL and IRIS. Or it may be an abbreviation of OI. This would mean it is an OIL objective with an IRIS assembly inside. Generally, any time you have an objective with a numerical aperture above 0.9, it would be an oil immersion objective. This means the objective is immersed in a special type of optical oil, and the oil actually becomes an integral part of being able to capture a higher resolution image. The lens of the objective is designed to be used with the oil. The same can be said for a condenser. These also have numerical aperture designations, and condensers can be oiled and must be oiled in many cases when going for higher power and higher resolution images. If there's no designation on the objective that it's an oil objective, then it would likely be a non-oil or a dry objective, in which case using oil would then ruin the lens. The infinity symbol means the lens is infinity corrected and is the latest microscope technology. The word plan designates a higher quality objective that gives a flat, even focus across the field of view, which is designated by the field number, or FN, which is also printed on the objective barrel. Let's move on and talk about the microscope head assembly. This is where the image gets directed to the eyepiece oculars and to the video camera for video viewing. Here we have two different head assemblies. With the first head assembly, there is a fixed internal prism that directs the image of the specimen in a 50-50 light split between the eyepiece oculars and the video camera. That means that 50% of the light goes to the eyepieces and at the same time, 50% of the light goes to the video camera. This is fixed and cannot be changed. This is a basic head that is fine for all educational microscopy and basic lab work. With the second head assembly, there is actually two components. The first is a trinocular port assembly, on top of which rests a standard binocular head. The trinocular portion contains an internal prism that is moved back and forth by an external control rod. When the rod is pushed in, 100% of the light goes to the eyepiece assembly. When the rod is pulled out, 20% of the light remains with the eyepieces, while 80% is directed to the video camera port in the back. This is an upgraded head assembly, and it is the desired setup when one believes they may be pursuing more advanced dark field studies or fluorescence microscopy, and they want all of the light directed to the eyepiece for more exacting research. On the head assembly, you will note that the eyepieces just slip into place. The right eyepiece is fixed, and the left has a diopter adjustment. When you focus with your microscope for the first time, you would focus the right eye first, and if the left eye needed any separate focus adjustment, you would simply rotate and tweak the left eye diopter adjustment to get the left eye in focus. The head also has a pupil distance adjustment to match the alignment of the operator's eyes. When the head assembly is in place, you will next want to couple the microscope to a video camera for TV viewing. You do this with a video coupler, and you basically have two choices. Either use a fixed video coupler that has a single magnification factor, or choose a video zoom coupler that will give you varying magnification and allow you to easily zoom in and zoom out on your TV monitor image. There's a big cost difference between these two choices, however. Where a standard fixed magnification coupler is about $200, an optical zoom coupler is $900 more. Yeah, but once you have used an optical zoom, it sort of spoils you and most folks want it. 
If cost is initially a factor, however, you should know that all biomedic systems are easily upgradable and anything can be added in the future. Today, most of the video cameras we use all have digital signal processing with analog outputs capable of going into any standard TV or laboratory monitor. Because we want full-frame television and real-time imaging, this continues to be the most economical and quality-wise choice. Once your microscope is set up, it is ready to be plugged into your TV monitor. At Biomedics, our preference is Sony CRT or cathode ray tube laboratory monitors. Hands down, they are the finest you can get, but they do come at a price. Because of this, some individuals will simply plug their microscope camera into a TV-VCR combination unit, and those that have higher resolution S-Video inputs are usually the better choice. Some people might use a flat panel display. Some will plug it directly into a projection TV unit for large screen viewing. There are many options here. The important thing is, whatever you plug your microscope video camera into, make sure you take the time to adjust the monitor's contrast, brightness, sharpness, and color settings to give you the best image possible. When you are using a flat panel display, because of the backlight that these displays use, you can get into the menu system on the video camera and do internal adjustments to the video camera itself to optimize the use of a flat panel. We also have the ability to direct our output to any computer for image capture and printing. We cover this information during our workshops and in the video tutorials and documentation that come with our microscope systems. Flexibility in a system to easily accept future upgrades can be an important consideration. In this review, you may have noticed an extra accessory spot that sits above the objectives. This is a slider assembly we use for special filters, including wave plates and polarizing filters in the condenser for gout testing and crystal urinalysis. Bottom line, with a biomedic system, you get first-rate Olympus engineering, and with their high-quality Infinity corrected optics on board, you are assured of first-rate imaging and easy upgrade potential should you want to expand in the future.